bottom of how this got so off the rails so it never happens again. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Comey, have you ever heard the expression, power doesn't change people, it just unmasks them? No, I don't think so. How's your book coming? How many copies have you sold? I don't know. A lot. I have a new one coming out in January about the Justice Department. I hope that'll sell a lot, too. But I don't know. The, I don't know the numbers. You, um, you enjoy attention, don't you, Mr. Comey? I do not. I enjoy attention from my family. I do not enjoy being recognized in public and my B-list celebrity fame, which I hope will go away very soon. Mm. Well, I'll give you this. Um, you have been an equal opportunity egotist. You have tried to screw both Trump and Clinton. Uh, you, you and let's talk about Clinton first. When you were head of the FBI, you investigated Secretary Clinton and her emails and her server, did you not? The FBI, FBI team did while I was director, yes. And you concluded that there was there were no criminal violations, did you not? There were no violations that a reasonable prosecutor would pursue. But you didn't just issue a statement. You called a press conference. And you you, you commented on her behavior. You you said she was extremely care, uh, careless, but in your opinion there was no criminal intent. What were you thinking of? I mean, this is the this is the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. Didn't you realize that could have an impact on the investigation? The investigation was ending at that point when I issued the summary of what we had. I'm concluded. sorry, I misspoke. Didn't you realize that could have an impact on the election? Oh, potentially, sure. And I was trying to offer. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was trying to offer transparency about the justification for ending an investigation of intense interest to the American people in July, it's July 5th of 2016. Well, you gave us a full dose of transparency. 11 days before the election, you sent a letter to Congress saying, oh, never mind what I said in my press conference, my unprecedented press conference, I'm going to reopen the investigation, didn't you? Correct. I, I didn't say what you just said in the letter, but I told the chairs of the committees we were reopening the investigation to examine some additional material. And then a few days later, right before the election, you said, never mind. She didn't do anything. No, no I, I said the examination was completed and it doesn't change our view. And this is, we're not talking about a parking ticket here. We're talking about the Democratic nominee for President of the United States, the most powerful person in the free world. And you didn't That's think that would have an impact on the election? Oh, oh I knew it could potentially have an impact no matter what we did. And you don't like attention? Yes, both of those things are true at the same time. Sometimes you have to make hard decisions and you don't like attention. Uh, let's talk about Trump. You didn't really care about uh, Dr. Page, did you? You wanted Trump, didn't you? That is not accurate. Um, when when you uh, when you uh, went and got these warrants uh, to investigate Dr. Page um, that that you don't remember much about, what, what what did that allow you to do? Could you follow him around? I didn't, Senator, go get any warrants. The investigative team and the lawyers from DOJ got right. offers. Right. Could you follow him around with, 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 a, with a, the authority from FISA? No, you didn't need authority from FISA to follow someone around. This was about electronic surveillance. Oh, so you, could, you could wiretap him? It allowed you to collect electronic communications that he was engaged in. You can wiretap him? 
Yeah, that's the old-fashioned term, but yes, you, it gave you authority to collect electronic communications. Almost no one could, uses could, could you bug him? Mm, I don't think there was authority in the FISA application for a remote listening device. Could you open his mail? I don't think that was included either. Uh, but you don't rem remember? I don't. It's easy to figure out, but I don't. sitting here, I don't know. Okay, that's fair. Um, and, and you're saying today that... Uh, that, that if you knew now what you didn't know then, that you wouldn't have signed the, the, uh, the, the application? I would not have signed the narrow certification that the FBI director has to give, but more importantly, I'd want to know from the team, how are you thinking about this? Why are these things not being included? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what I'm, I mean, you're, you're a smart guy. You're an honors graduate, William and Mary, Chicago Law School. And uh, you, you don't like attention. And I'm trying to understand that this, you're investigating, now you're investigating the Republican nominee for President of the United States. Okay? No. You've already finished with the Democratic nominee. Yeah, we now were it's not the Republican nominee. And you, you, you're, you, you, you got a FISA warrant that was a lie. And you say, well, it wasn't, you're head of the FBI. Didn't you check? Didn't you go, hey, guys, this is the, 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 this is a nominee for president of the United States. Let's sit down and talk about what's your evidence. You never did that? Senator, we were never investigating the candidate, the Republican candidate, Mr. Trump. This is about a surveillance warrant on someone who was no longer associated with the campaign. Oh, you just got his name out of the, out of the white pages. Whose name? And, and, and then with, with General Flynn, you, you've wrapped up your investigation, but you decide to take one more shot. Sally Yates says you went rogue. Isn't that accurate? It is not accurate. Well, why would she say that? She sure didn't compliment you. I was sitting right here, bigger than Dallas. Listen to her. She said you went rogue. Is he asking me what she meant by that? Yeah, what do you think about that? No, I think she was disappointed that I didn't coordinate the Flynn interview with her in advance, and I understood her concern about that. I think she understood my explanation afterwards as to why I used my authority, which I had, to do it without coordinating. But you don't like attention. I stand by my earlier answer. I love attention from my grandchildren and my children and my wife. Uh, the rest of it, I could uh, let politicians have it. Can we agree that the FBI is the premier law enforcement agency in all of human history? I think so, at risk of offending DEA, I think so. Mr. Comey, if you'd chosen a different career, say a driving instructor, and you'd never pursued a career at the FBI, don't you think the FBI would be better off? I didn't pursue a career at the FBI. I was very happily teaching at Columbia when I was asked to become FBI director. Uh, that's enough. So uh, we'll go to uh, our next uh, Senator Blackburn in a minute. Are you aware that Mr. Barnett, who was the lead investigator of the Flynn case, uh, recently said that he did not believe there was a crime involving uh, General Flynn? I read his 302, and I think it does say that he thought that before January 5th or before yeah. Flynn was interviewed. So how normal is it for the lead investigator to believe that the person he's investigating didn't commit a crime and went so far as to say that he thought the whole team was out to get Trump? Is that a normal thing in the <laughs> FBI? Is that something the court should consider as to whether or not this is a legitimate prosecution? I think Mr. Barnett was confusing the nature of the investigation, which is a little bit concerning if he was working on it. It was a counterintelligence investigation, not a criminal no, no. investigation. So here's the point, Mr. Comey. You set Flynn up to get prosecuted. This was a counterintelligence investigation, and there was no there there. This man was the incoming 
national security advisor. He had every reason in the world to be talking to, to the Russians about change in policy. But this whole rogue thing, setting up an interview in the White House, going around normal procedures, bothered a lot of people. Are you aware that agents felt that the investigation was conducted so poorly that they had to buy liability insurance or thought about buying liability insurance? I am not, although I thought all FBI agents uh, well, I, I just want the public to know this was so bad by the people involved, they felt like they needed to buy liability insurance, that the man involved investigating General Flynn didn't believe the man committed a crime, and what they charged him with was giving false information about a contact with the Russian ambassador when he was the national security advisor, which was on tape. And when Mr. Barnett looked at the Kislyak interaction, he said, I haven't changed my mind. I think that's why the Department of Justice is so upset with the Flynn prosecution. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Comey, we thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate having your time. Uh, you know, this is our day three hearing. We have talked with Rod Rosenstein. We have also had the opportunity to talk with Sally Yates. And yes, in her testimony, she did say that she thought you went rogue on this situation. Um, and that is of concern for us. And one of the reasons we wanted to hear from you today, and I will tell you this, as I talked to Tennesseans, um, one of the things that they're trying to figure out is quite simply this. Somebody cooked up this plot. They came up with this. And then somebody gave the order to carry this plot out. And somebody did the dirty work. But then when you talk to Rosenstein and Yates and now hearing from you, basically what you say is you didn't know anything about any of this. And you did not know any of this was going on. So uh, why don't you tell us who came up with this plot? And then who gave the order to carry this about, out? Senator. What plot are you talking about, Senator? Spying on the president. Yeah, there was no spying on the president. You, you say there was no spying. There was no problems with Carter Page getting that FISA warrant. There was no problems with Papadopoulos. There was no uh, problem with General Flynn. You're saying that you had just cause for every bit of that, even though, as the chairman just said, and as Senator Kennedy said, your goal was to get to the president, right? I'm not sure what your question is. Well, that is not surprising to me. Let me ask you this. The books that you're writing, would we find those as fiction or nonfiction? Nonfiction. Nonfiction. OK, uh, I guess you've got plenty of facts in there that are footnoted and can back you up, right? Sure. And you can read the IG report and the Mueller report and the Senate Intelligence Committee. You know, Committee. let's talk about that IG report as a matter of fact. Um, I think it's interesting because when the IG report really contradicted uh, your statements, you claimed that the FBI did not spy on the Trump campaign in 2017. And the IG report contradicted you on that. Is that a question? Yes, sir. What do you have to say about that? I'm not aware that there's a contradiction on that point in the IG report. OK, you're not aware of that. All right, uh, I assume that you're aware of the article that was posted to the Washington Post under your byline in May 28, 2019. Uh, James Comey, no treason, no coup, just lies and dumb lies. You recall that article? Yes, yes Senator, I wrote that. Oh, you did write that, okay. And do you still stand by that article because it alleges that Joseph Mifsud was a Russian agent? Yeah, I think that's right. I think the Intelligence Committee found that he was representing Russian interests in communicating with Papadopoulos. Okay. All right. And uh, so you're standing by that article. I haven't read it since May of 2019, but I, I think it was, I got nothing I can think of now that I want to change. And, and okay, and nothing has changed your opinions. I 
Senator, I don't know what the opinions are that you're asking me about, but I don't know anything about something I wrote in May of 2019 that I would change. And if somebody wants to know your opinions, they can buy one of your books, right? Or read the post or come to this hearing. Yep. Um, I have to go back to this about who came up with this plot to carry all of this out. We have seen all these emails, the communications between Strzok and Page, we have seen, we've read the IG report. We know there were things that seemed to be conveniently overlooked. And it is astounding to me that as the head of the premier law enforcement agency, you, Rosenstein, and Yates knew absolutely nothing. But then you knew enough to go to the January 5th meeting in the Oval Office. Did you call that meeting or did either President Obama or Vice President Biden call that meeting? I don't know who called it. I was uh, asked to come to the White House for that meeting for the briefing on the 5th of January. Okay, you were asked to come. And who issued the invitation to you to attend that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, who mentioned the Logan Act and using that against General Flynn? Nobody that I recall. At the White House, I remember discussing it at the FBI, but not at the White House. With the FBI, okay. And then um, what were Peter Strzok's notes um, as later relayed to him by you, what did President Obama mean by instructing you to make sure that you had the right people on it? I don't, I don't know, know what, what Peter Strzok's notes reflect. I haven't talked to him about them. And I don't remember using those, hearing those words from President Obama or using them with Peter Strzok. I remember the president saying, do this in the normal way, was the way I understood him. Okay. All right, so still there is uh, a veil of vagueness that is around your recollections and your memory when it comes to these incidences. Do you have any regrets? My memory is pretty good. I don't tend to remember exact words unless I write them down. I remember the words of my marriage vows, even though it was 1987. I don't remember specific words that were used during that January 5th meeting because I didn't write a memo about it afterwards. You know, uh, Mr. Comey, I call that selective memory. You choose to remember certain things and you choose to be vague about other things. But one of the things that we do know is that the American people have been deeply troubled by the fact that the FBI could have conducted themselves in this way, that the DOJ could have been involved in this. They want to trust the institutions of their government. They see someone in you who is very arrogant, who is very dismissive, and is very condescending to the concerns that they have about the structure of government and the American taxpayer. They're paying the paycheck for every single person that is in that DOJ and that FBI, and they expect their best efforts. And according to Ms. Yates, you did not give those best efforts. You chose to go rogue. I yell back. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cummings, I really appreciate you coming uh, today. You didn't have to do this. You chose to do it, and I want to thank you. Mr. Comey, are you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still, still here. here. Okay, yeah. So I want to thank you for coming, and we'll wrap this up. Um, is it fair to say that knowing what we know now, Crossfire Hurricane was not done by the book? No, no. I don't think that's fair to say. Okay. That is fair to say. It was not done by the book, right? No, I'm disagreeing with you. I, my answer, okay. you asked me at the beginning. I think in the main okay. it was done by the book. Well, God help us all, my friend, if this is by the book. God help the United States of America if this was done by the book because it was such an egregious violation of fairness, altering exculpatory information, 
failing to tell the court the unreliability of information before the court that was outcome determinative of getting a warrant against American citizen. If this is by the book, we need to rewrite the book, and I promise you we will. Uh, thank you very, very much for coming, and uh, thank you. Uh, now, what will we be doing next? This committee will be going down the ladder of who signed the warrant application to get a FISA warrant against Carter Page. We've had <clears throat> Rosenstein, who is the acting attorney general, Sally Yates, who was the acting attorney general for this, the number two at DOJ when it was, she was in charge, both say, I would not have signed the warrant application if I knew then what I know now regarding Mr. Carter Page. Now we have the FBI director who came into the, the hearing today and said that three times he signed the application against Carter Page, he would not have signed it knowing what he knows now, knowing then what he knows now. So where are we headed? McCabe uh, is next. He was the number two at the FBI. What am I worried about to the, men, uh, uh, to, to the public? I'm worried that we're going to blame this on some low-level people. Somebody has got to be blamed for withholding exculpatory information from a court that would have saved an American citizen a lot of grief. Somebody's got to be blamed by using a document prepared by a foreign agent on the payroll of the Democratic Party who hired a Russian agent to create a document called the dossier that was full of falsehoods that led to the obtaining of a warrant against a member of the opposition party's campaign team. Somebody has to pay that price, because if they don't, we will keep doing this again. If it can happen to a Republican, it can happen to a Democrat. So what do I see here? Everybody at the top saying, not me. How is it possible that the director of the FBI, in one of the most important cases in the history of the FBI, was not made aware of the fact that the CIA called the dossier the critical document to get a warrant against Carter Page, internet rumor. How is it possible that he did not know that the primary subsource was a single individual suspected by the FBI of being a Russian agent? How is it possible he wasn't informed by people in the FBI after two interviews in January and March of the Russian subsource, the Russian agent, that the dossier was bar talk, hearsay, you need to take it with a grain of salt, that none of that made it into the next warrant application in April, none of that made it to the top of the FBI. How is it possible something this important to the country that it's not remotely possible to me that the case falls apart and nobody tells anybody at the top? So to those who found this out, that interviewed the subsource, to those who were made aware that the uh, subsource was a potential Russian agent, they want to hang you with this. If you didn't tell the court, then you're in trouble. If you didn't inform your superiors, you're in trouble because there's a duty to can of candor to the court. So those of you who knew that the dossier wasn't reliable, was internet rumor, who had information that the uh, subsource disavowed the reliability of the document, and you didn't tell anybody about it, you need to be fired or you're subject to going to jail. If you did tell somebody, then you've done your job. But here's where we're headed, apparently. And one of the most corrupt investigations in modern history involving the nominee of the Republican Party where the FBI used a document prepared by a foreign agent, Christopher Steele, who hired a Russian spy to create a document to get a warrant against American citizen about activities in Russia that were Russian disinformation, at least in part, that we end this whole drama with saying, these things just happen. Nobody at the top really needs to be held accountable other than, well, yes, my fault intellectually. Somebody needs to be fired or go to jail. Mr. Kleinsmith is pleading guilty to altering a document that it was exculpatory to Mr. Page. Without the dossier, there would be no warrant against Carter Page because all the Russian contacts 
could be explained if you understood Mr. Page had been working with the CIA, something the FBI knew and failed to tell the court. He went through hell because of the dossier. Not one person has been prosecuted for colluding with the Russians in the Trump world. Why does the Radcliffe revelations matter? The director of the FBI was informed by the intelligence community in September of 2016 that there was a plot being cooked up by the Clinton campaign to accuse Trump of being involved with the Russians to distract from her email server problem. And the FBI director doesn't remember that interaction. Here's the question. Do you think if this information involved Trump, they would have done something about it? I've looked in the file. I can't find any evidence they took it serious. It doesn't matter if it's reliable or not. The question is, did the FBI pursue evidence against the Clinton campaign with the same vigor they did the Trump campaign? Can you imagine what the media would be saying today? This revelation were about Trump. Can you imagine how breathless it would be if the FBI just ignored it? Would, can you imagine how this would be betraying on the newspapers and TV uh, networks of this country if the Republican Party had hired Christopher Steele, who hired a Russian agent, to investigate the Clinton campaign, to get a dossier on dossier on Clinton accusing her of horrible things that were all Russian disinformation, hearsay, innuendo to the American media. You gave Mueller a lot of coverage. I supported the Mueller investigation because I think it was important that we run these allegations down where there's accusations about the integrity of our elections, about the role of Russia, we should all be concerned. But now that we know, now that we know that the Carter Page fiasco was an effort by a political party to create a document to get to be used against an American citizen weaponizing political research, nobody seems to care. My colleagues talked about everything but the issue before us. I care. I supported legislation protecting Mueller from being fired. Why? Because I cared. I agree with the following. If the Democrats were in charge, we wouldn't be having this hearing. The Horowitz report, 17 violations of protocol and policy regarding the Carter Page Warren application. Thank God for Mr. Horowitz. We have found more, even more stunning violations. The House Judiciary Committee has declared war on the Trump administration every way you can, including impeaching him, but they have yet to hold a hearing with Mr. Horowitz. This committee has had hearings about Russia involvement in our election, about their methods and their means. We call Sally Yates and Clapper to tell us about their concerns about Flynn at a time when people didn't know. So I want to end with this about the Flynn matter. It is not normal, ladies and gentlemen, that the agent involved investigating a case, Mr. Barnett, felt like that there was no crime and the man gets prosecuted anyway. It's not normal for the agent in charge of investigating a case to believe that the organization was out to get a particular individual, in, the, in this case, Trump. This is not normal. The Flynn case is not normal. The people in the field wanted to drop it. They kept pushing it. They manufactured a crime against General Flynn. He was not colluding with the Russians. He had every reason in the world to be talking to Mr. Kislyak, the ambassador to Russia, because he was going to be the incoming national security advisor. It is not normal that the FBI takes a politically contrived document from a Russian agent paid for by the Democratic Party and use it against an American citizen. That is not normal. Somebody needs to be held accountable for this. Not only is it not normal, it is incredibly dangerous. So what will we do in this committee? We will keep moving forward. I'm going to call everybody who signed the warrant application and ask them, if you knew then what you know now, would you have signed the warrant application against Carter Page? And oh, by the way, how is it possible that the people 
in charge seemed to know nothing about egregious abuses and one of the most important cases in the history of the FBI. Stay tuned.